You're watching Pascal in the Morning. Welcome back. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. What's up, y'all? Hope you guys are doing well out there in Facebook and YouTube and Twitter land. It's your boy, Pascal. This is the Pascal Show, a.k.a. Pascal in the morning. What a blessing to be here today. It is a beautiful day today. Hopefully it's not raining where you're at because I hear there's a lot of thunderstorms coming through everywhere right now. It's been crazy. Hope you guys are staying cool out there because it's getting hot. It's even hot in this room right now as we speak. But, oh man, we got a great show for you guys today. It's gonna be a wonderful one. But before we get things moving, I don't know what happened to the music, but DJ Kimmy New on the ones and twos. What's up? DJ How you Kimmy doing, sweetie? New. I'm very good. I'm very blessed to be here. I know you got some stuff coming up on the 11th, right? Tomorrow, where's it at again? House of Soul, STL Culture, right? Definitely go check her out. You know how talented she is. Look how good she looks in the yellow, y'all. Come on now. Make some noise for Kimmy New. What a beautiful thing. And then, of course, on the comments, we got Sean Hall, yo. What's up, good man? What's good? Yeah, you been all right? I'm good, yeah. I like the tie. I like the jacket. I like the blazers. Looking good, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So what's the, the what's the top of the topic of Let's Talk today? So Let's Talk. Um, just a really good conversation is about uh, how do you feel about male cheerleaders in the NFL? So we've grown up having male cheerleaders in you know, mid school or uh, high school as well, but now the NFL is starting to incorporate that. What do you think? It's gonna be interesting. So definitely comment down below. Let us know what you think. Male cheerleaders in the NFL, that's a new thing. It's gonna be very interesting to see how they get incorporated into everything. Are they gonna be doing aerials, that kind of thing? That's, that's what I'd like to know. Are they gonna be doing like holding them up in the air? Like, you know what I'm saying? Or, or are they just there to cheerlead as well? So I would love to hear what you think down below. Comment down below. And if this is your first time checking out this show, give us a bunch of love. Give us a bunch of likes, a lot of smiley faces, the whole nine. Our setup, the run of show is going to be a little different due to time constraints on some of the guests that I have on the show. So uh, we are gonna get things moving here very quickly. I do have this guy, he is uh, a child actor, former child actor. He was on the, uh, the movie, The Toy, and also uh, A Christmas Story. I have Scott Schwartz on the phone right now. Hey, make some noise for Scott Schwartz. Yeah. Hey, brother, how you doing, my dude? Uh, thank you so much for calling in on the show. So, real quick, tell me what's going on next weekend. Uh, next weekend, we have the uh, STM, uh, STL Pop Culture Con. It's over at the St. Charles Convention Center. Right. And it's going to be over 30 celebrities and uh, 70, 80 vendor tables, 90 vendor tables, more booths. Wow. And, um, for, uh, for display, selling merchandise and whatever, but... 30 celebrities is, is the largest that has been brought to uh, the St. Louis area ever. Now, that's really exciting, man. And I understand that, like, people like Scott Baio is going to be there. Like, you know, Charles in Charge is going to be there, apparently. Uh, who else uh, is going to be there? Well, we've got six members of the original Grease cast from uh, Grease. three of the t -Bos and uh, two of the uh, pink ladies, Barry Pearl. Uh, Michael Tushi and Kelly Ward, and actually, it's the first time the three of them have ever done an event together. Michael wow. and Kelly have never done a signing before or an appearance before. This is their first time ever. That's uh, also the, the one and only Didi Khan. Frenchie is coming. Wow. Um, as is uh, Jamie Donnelly, who played Jan, who is the brush of brush of brush of girl. <laughs> That's what's up, man. So you got the hookup. Apparently, you got most of the cast, of, a good portion of the cast of, the, of, of Greece, Scott Bale, and a, a, a slew of other people. Uh, where is this event happening again? The St. Charles Convention Center. St. Charles Friday, Convention. Saturday, Sunday, 17th, 18th, 19th. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much for calling in. I look forward to seeing you in the flesh next week. Uh, I understand you're going to be coming on to the show on Wednesday, correct? Show on Monday, and yeah. then, uh, we're gonna get somebody else. But I mean, we've got Alan Oppenheimer from Master of the Universe, he was Skeletor, 
one of the guys that did Comet the Frog, Margaret Carey, who was Tinkerbell. Man. Nah, but... Page who Boogie Boogie, you know, in uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Bert Gillian from Blazing Saddles. Wow. Martin Cleaver from Pirates of the Caribbean. It's nonstop. Check out the site, <clears throat> www.stl-popculturecon.com. Oh, great, man. Well, everybody, make some noise for Scott Schwartz. Look forward to seeing you soon, my brother. Anyway, be sure to check him out, stl-popculturecon.com. Big event coming up this weekend, or next weekend, I'm sorry. Definitely tune in. I am looking forward to it. Hopefully, we're going to be doing a pop-up show down there over that weekend. That's the 17th, 18th, and 19th of next week. It's going to be insane. But also, you know, I got to say, the people behind the, the cameras to make us all look good, we got Brianna, Sess, and Tom. What's up, guys? What's up? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, uh, man, we got a great show for you guys. We in from his stand-up comedy weekend at the Laugh Lounge. We have the very funny Kenny Howell is here, y'all. Make some noise for that. And also, in from his stand-up comedy weekend as well, at the Helium Comedy Club, we have the legendary, the talented, the hilarious, mm. John Witherspoon is in the house. Yeah. Man, I'm so excited. Man, I'm telling you, it's like a dream come true that he's coming. He's on this show. It's going to be a blessing, man. I'm so excited. But anyway, it's time to get into the news. It's a quick one today, though. I'm, I'm happy about that. Melania <laughs> Trump's parents have became U.S. citizens yesterday using a process known as chain migration, which President Trump has often railed against. And, you know, this actually has me thinking. What if Trump's hardline immigration policy was just an elaborate attempt by a man to keep his in-laws from moving in? Just think about it. Anyway, <laughs> in entertainment news, the Oscars announced that they will be shortening this year's broadcast by one hour while adding a category for best popular movie. In the in memoriam section, the in, in, in memoriam section will also be shortened to only include actors who died of natural causes. Anyway, we got a great show for you guys. Tune in, we got John Witherspoon coming up next. See you guys in a little bit. Deucey! <laughs> Woo! You gonna perform I'm sorry, tonight? I can't make this interview boring, because this no, man is boring. too exciting as a host. And I'm truly saying this, and if y'all can't do this, me and this man here is going to leave and go somewhere else where we can get some love. I want everyone in the building to say, I love Pascal on the count of three. <laughs> One, two, three. Wow. The Fur and Leather Center, providing the highest of fur and leather goods. IDEX Media does a lot. From IDEX Photography to IDEX Films. We help create forever memories and forever impressions. Imagination. Image a world. IDEX Media. Awesome sauce. Yeah, baby. So here at The Tent Guy, we try to do things completely differently than everyone else has done in the past. Our emphasis is on customer satisfaction from the moment they walk into the door to the moment they leave in their vehicle with whatever services it is that they had performed. We know that we're not the cheapest around, but we are the best. 
and that's the emphasis that we try to push onto everyone. We don't want to be the people that are advertising we have the cheapest prices in town because therefore we would never be the best. We offer full tinting services, custom tinting services on classic cars. We offer paint protection film, ceramic coatings, full detailing services. We offer full vehicle wrapping and graphics. We offer lettering on commercial vehicles. We offer full print vehicle wraps for advertising. We offer uh, exterior window advertising, window perf. Not only do we do automobiles, but we do residences, also commercial buildings. You're watching Pascal in the Morning. Welcome back. Hey, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If this is your first time checking out the show, please go to Facebook.com forward slash The Pascal Show and hit that like button, man. Just hit that like button. We are also on YouTube as well. We got a YouTube channel. It's kind of dope. There's a lot of stuff going on over there. There's also some behind the scenes stuff on that page too. So go to the youtube.com forward slash The Pascal Show and click that subscribe button. We would love that, all right? We are about to have some greatness on the show here. This man is legendary. Everything from the Boondocks Friday, Boomerang. He taught us the importance of coordination. All right? This man is amazing. Please give it up for the very talented, the hilarious John Witherspoon, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Good, my brother. Thank yes. you so much for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. No, it means a lot. Yeah. I know you're a busy man. I know you've been running around all day today. All day. I just saw you on Fox in the morning. Yep. I, I don't know where you were after this, after that, but I know you've yep. been bouncing around like crazy. Yeah, but it's part of the business. Yeah, it's part of the gig, right? I don't mind. I don't mind. Yeah. I don't mind being here. I think it's wonderful. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That means a lot. That means a lot. Thank you. So, uh, so tell me, uh, I, I know I heard this on Fox, but I'm going to ask you too. Right. You know, Friday is a, uh, you know, iconic. It's it's a huge yeah. show, a uh, huge movie. Uh, you guys have had two other ones after that. So yep. I heard there's mm, rumors about maybe doing a, another one. Well, there will be a fourth Friday. Um, I talked to Ice Cube, and Ice Cube said they're going to start shooting the fourth Friday around uh, the latter part of the year, uh, November, December. Oh, wow. Yeah. So really soon. Yep, yep. After they finish the uh, big three basketball tournament. Oh, wow. Okay. So almost done with that. They're going into the playoffs now. That's incredible, so man. So we'll start working, uh, uh, and it should uh, take about a year to do all this. So if another year from there, uh, we will have the Friday on in the, studio, in the uh, theaters. Man, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited about that. Are you guys excited about that? Yeah. Anybody excited about that? Because I'm excited about that. That's incredible stuff. I mean, yeah. so tell me why, like, why, what is it about that movie that makes everybody so well, excited about that coming back again? Well, everybody can relate to Friday. You know, you, I remind people of their fathers or their granddaddy. Right. And uh, Cube remind people of their people's sons. And, uh, you know, I, we've got uh, Smokey remind people of their people's friends. Right. So uh, it, it, there's something for everybody. Right. So that's why it's such a success. There is something for yeah. everybody in that movie. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. all races, too. All everybody races. can relate to yeah. it. I had you a know? guy, I was in Santa Monica, California, and I was looking at the water and some. Asian guy walked up to me and he said, uh, you remind me of my daddy. I said, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you're like, oh, that, ah, oh, okay. I don't, I ain't your daddy, but uh, yeah. I appreciate that. But it's, if it's, you it's try to say something thing, there. It's a wonderful thing to say that, you know, to feel that I remind people of their, their fathers. Right. And I'm not an evil guy. You know, yeah. I'm a nice, a nice father. Oh, of course. But that's as good, that's good for you, see, you being a nice father. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen you play a role that wasn't with some sort of humility oh, or some yeah, sort yeah, of... Yeah, you got to be positive. Yeah. Especially the Wayne brothers. We were always a message in every show. Always. Message! Always message. Right? Me message. Huh? 
Oh, that was that was the well, David what, Wayne. That wasn't really. What fun. was it like on that on that set anyway? Oh, we had a lot brothers. of fun. We all ad lived and we had a lot of fun. And Sean and Marlon are just like my kids. They just like yeah. my sons. And they're wonderful people. Um, all all the Wayne brothers, I know them all. Yeah. And uh, they're all wonderful people. Uh, oh, I yeah. mean, they seem like really good, grounded, yeah, down to earth, down to earth people. Brilliant, and they all excellent. And they know the business really well. They know the business, you yes, know, and they yeah. and they just been knocking yeah. it out the park. And they helped with all me a that. lot when I got that job. You know, that was one of the first jobs that was that the check cleared. <laughs> and, right. Uh, and I worked there. We were there for five years. Yeah, I mean, five it, years. About five seasons, right? Five Six. Years, yeah. Five, five, six seasons. Five seasons. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So I was, I was happy because you get a check every week. Yeah. And that helps a person out. In oh, Hollywood, I bet it does. In Hollywood. <laughs> well, you know what? Let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, uh, starting out as a young cat in Hollywood, doing your thing, what was, like, where was the first place you went to to get your comedy chops going? When I, when I first got to California, the word is go to the comedy store. I went to the comedy store. They had just started, see, just opened it. So I went to the comedy store, and uh, Mitzi would put us on, on, the, on potluck night. That means you go out there when you yeah. open mic. That's uh, Mitzi. Uh, Mitzi Shore. Okay. Yeah. And uh, open mic night, comics that want to be comics go there and uh, try out. And then she, if she liked you, she would give you a spot during the week. Right. And that's what I did. But it wasn't that many comics then. Right. They would close the open mic night. They would close it at 1130 at night because there's not enough comics to go to two. Right. So now they got you got to call a yeah. month ahead before you can get a spot. Yeah, it's impossible now. It's impossible. It's impossible. Yeah. And yeah, and most of those stand-ups are viral video cats, you know, that, that are doing yeah. comedy, yeah, uh, comedy they, skits all the time. They don't have a 10 minutes of material. Right. Those comedy guys on video. Yeah. But they still they sell out a comedy club for 10 minutes, and then they take questions. So what was it that you like? What was your job during that time? Like while you were oh, trying I, to get out there know, as a comedian. You know, see, a lot, of, a lot of comics um, don't like to be the, they don't like the, the MC job. I took the job as the MC. Because she oh. offered it to me. I said, if I'm an MC, I can get on stage. I'd be on stage every night. So I can work on my act while I'm doing the MC job. Right. So I do two minutes of my act and bring somebody up. Right. Then I do three minutes of my act and bring somebody up. That's so now smart. I get up to about five, six, seven minutes. She's going to say, you funny yourself. Why don't you do a right. set? And then we get somebody else to MC. I said, no, I'll be the MC. Right. Just I'll, just, I'll, in, I'll bring people up. But I was the MC for a long time. Yeah. Let David Letterman was the MC the first show. I MC the second show. Right. I was going to ask you about yeah. your your relationship with David. He's David an old friend Letterman. of mine. Yeah. 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 He's uh, of course you know a legend in his oh in his own right God. of course too. Yeah. He he's been very successful. Yeah. And it's I'm I'm happy. He's a good man. We used to play we used to play one on one whole court basketball together. Really. One on one. Can you play ball? I'm not that good. You're about 6'8", eight, ain't you? <laughs> I'm 6'4". Six, 6'4"? Four. Six, four? I'm 6'4", yeah. You didn't play no basketball? I, I did in, in grade school, but, uh, wow. you know, I didn't do in high school. I'd probably nah. take you to the hoop then. Oh, huh? yeah, all day. All day. <laughs> you, you could teach me right now. I, it would be embarrassing. It would be embarrassing. Stephen Curry. There would be nothing here. There would be nothing. It would be just <laughs> bricks all day long. All day long. Uh, but uh, uh, so I know that you were working with other legends like yeah. – uh, Richard Pryor, Richard Pryor, uh, Robin Williams. We Any particular legend that you kind of learned something from that you you know like oh. Well, you you you. I used to open the open the show for Richard Pryor, and I noticed how the people laugh. They all laugh like this. <laughs> they so they laughing so hard. Right. So I try to acquire that same <laughs> when I'm on stage with my audience. Yeah. I learned that. Plus, Richard Pryor was great with uh, ad libbing. Oh, he's fantastic. So I learned yeah. how to do it. I learned ad libbing from him also. So you learned the ad lib from him. Oh, I oh I ad lib every scene. I, I, all I, the stuff I do on TV now is a lot yeah. of ad libbing. Because that's what I've heard. Like that yeah. you a lot of your scenes, like especially like Boomerang. Oh, which, yeah, we, by the way, yeah. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. I mean, aside from Boomerang, every single scene that you've ever been, every single yeah. movie you've ever been in, right? You always steal the scene. Well, you know, we ad lib, and you look at the script and say that ain't funny. So you. When, when they say action, you do what you want to do. And then when they say cut, they're going to all laugh. And the person who said action said, well, keep that in, keep that in. Yeah. And then, so I, I, the, the boomerang scene were all ad there. Wow. Not one word was written. So, we're, so you're telling me that 
coordinate and bang bang. I, I came with all that stuff. The mushroom jacket, I went the to mushroom the, I went everything. To the wardrobe department, and I bought. I, I didn't buy. I picked all that stuff out. Yeah. And uh, they didn't know what I was gonna say. But I said, all, all I want you to do is when I open the door, when you open the door, ask me how do I pick my clothes. That's why you got. I said you got to coordinate. You got to coordinate, and that's how they got that. <laughs> So we shot that. They were laughing so hard. I'm just still yeah. remembering. I'm like playing yeah, the whole scene in my head. It, it, it is so hilarious. When, they, when we were finished, <laughs> um, they had to shoot it again because the cameraman shook the camera when he was looking, laughing so hard. And and, and uh, uh, Paramount did not want. I think Paramount did that. Was it Warner Brothers or Paramount? Anyway, they didn't want us to do this scene in the, in, the, in in a boomerang. But okay. they were finished with the movie. Oh, that, Eddie so Murphy said, I want Spoon to play David Allegria's father. And Paramount, Paramount, they said, we don't want Spoon, whoever he is. Right. They said, well, where's the script? They said, ain't no script. Spoon's going to make it funny. I guarantee. Said, we don't know who's the Spoon. Yeah. So they didn't want to do it. They said, we, we, cut the whole sh we cut the whole movie out if you're going to have this Spoon. Don't, don't, don't force us to do this. Right. So Eddie Murphy said, whatever y'all want to do, Spoon's going to play this part. Well, they called me and said, Spoon, you better be funny. <laughs> so... They flew me from L.A. to uh, yeah. New York, and my wife, B.B. Message Drake, and I wrote down something right there. When I'm on my way to the airport, I'm going to say, coordinate, I'm going to say, bang, bang, bang. And so they didn't know what we were going to do. But when, I, when we shot the first scene, people from Paramount was laughing the most of all the people. Right. And so they said, oh, my God, welcome. Thank, thanks for coming. Welcome to the show. Welcome to this. You're so wonderful. Thank you. They loved it. How did you meet? How did... Eddie Murphy know about you? It was it just well, seeing you at the I've been, comedy I've store? Been, I've been in a, a lot of stuff with Eddie. I mean, I, a comedy okay. store. Then you, right. then you, um, then you, um, we would do. Uh, well, they, I knew Eddie. Mur I knew Martin Lawrence. I was on Martin Lawrence show. I was on uh, David Allen I knew from. He's from Detroit. Mm. We old guys from Detroit, and uh, so I knew basically all of them. That's incredible. And and uh, so we did uh, we did that scene. They, they think about doing another another uh, uh, boomerang. Really? Yeah. Oh man, I would, oh. Yeah. And that the same director. Movies, so yeah. The same director that directed uh, Boomerang mm. directed the Boondocks. He was the executive producer of the Boondocks. He said, "Spoon, you want to be a want to be on a cartoon?" I said, "Nah, I don't do cartoons." He said, "Come on, man, you gonna like that? I said, what is it about? You, you an old dude got two kids? I don't want to do no crap like that." Right. Then he said, "Just do the first one." I did the first one. I said, "Boy, this is nice." Yeah. We went five years. Granddad. Granddad. All day. Riley, get yeah. over here, Riley. <laughs> Hear me. So after uh, doing, <laughs> like, your first few scenes, because mm. obviously have you ever done, you've uh, never done animation before that, right? No, I never. No, I, oh, I did. I was in uh, Baby Kid. Oh, right, right. You were in Baby Kid. Baby Kid. Another classic. Baby Kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, was, yeah I was in Baby Kid. Oh, okay. So I, I used to work with Robin Harris. Um, we were on... Robert Townsend's Partners in Crime. It was on HBO. You can pull it up now. Old stuff they had we did years ago. Right. But uh, he was a brilliant man, Robin Harris. And we were supposed to do a, a TV show on CBS, our own show. Oh, your own before show? Before he died, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it would have been funny, wouldn't it? Robin and I. It would have been. It would have been. <laughs> that would have been uh, man, a classic. Robin. Yeah. Oh, my. What was the premise? I don't know. We oh, didn't, you didn't know? Okay. They were just getting us together and see if we want to do it. Yeah. And we had a showcase at the comedy store. I mean, they knew, they knew both of us, actually. And so they said, we, you know, they, they sign a contract first before they start premises and stuff. Right. So they don't do anything like that until you sign a contract. So that, that's, that's the way it was in Hollywood, yeah. That's incredible, man. I'm, I'm, first off, I'm just going to say yeah. this is a uh, pleasure. I'm, I'm pleasure I'm, it's a pleasure to have you here yeah. on the show, man. Um, it's incredible. Now, incredible. I have one more thing before I go. I'm taking up everybody's time, ain't it? Oh, no. Um, You're not taking anybody's time. I have time. a cooking show on YouTube. It's called John Witherspoon Cooking for Poor People. <laughs> because <laughs> when, you're hungry, when you're hungry, everything tastes good. <laughs> so you can check it out on YouTube. Nothing but ramen, ramen noodles. No, 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 no. I don't cook. That's prison food. This is poor people's <laughs> food. <laughs> so give me an example. What's, what's one of your uh, dishes? What's one of your dish, best dishes? A, a, a dish is uh, chicken feet and rice. Chicken feet or rice. And if you're hungry, them chicken feet be tasting good. It tastes amazing. Tear them chicken feet up. <laughs> Pour some of that chicken gravy over that rice. <laughs> and, and that's then, on YouTube. It's on YouTube. 
Okay. And I, but nobody ate my chicken feet and rice. I tried to get the dog to eat it. He ran away, too. So he ran away. I had to chase him down the, the, the road and try to get him to eat. Come back here and eat the chicken feet. <laughs> <laughs> and then you eat chicken feet and rice, and I recommend a tall, tall glass of Mad Dog 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so y'all check my show up. Uh, we're going to definitely check that John out. John Witherspoon, Cooking for Poor People. For, uh, cooking for Poor People with John Witherspoon, right? First, John Witherspoon, John Cooking with, for Poor People. Ah, John Witherspoon, Cooking yeah. for, for, with, uh, for, for, for Poor People. For Poor People. Poor people. Yeah. Uh, we also do have this thing real quick. Uh, it is called uh, Burning Questions. So uh, this is the spot where everybody gets an opportunity to call in or send a video or comment down below with a burning question for our guest of the day. Our number one question is, uh, we got a video from Ethan Jones, and so <laughs> here it is. Wait, 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 I see. Hey, John, have, have you ever put water in your cereal? Just ask him for a friend. So, <laughs> Ethan Jones did ask, a pretty funny question. It's a little bit of a throwback to Friday. Right. Have you ever had water in your cereal? Um, I had some very thin milk. Very thin milk. Where you put water in the milk to stretch it. Yeah, to shake it up. Yeah, and you, then you got some milk. You ain't got no milk, you got milk. <laughs> <laughs> and get you some sugar on top of that. That's some water. Water. Water, yeah. Water. water. This is a little bit of milk. Yeah. Whole <laughs> lot of water. I'm, um, from a, I'm from a family of 11 kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we, I'm from a big family. It also, in Detroit. It, it, can you explain to me, I also uh, overheard something about... Witherspoon, Witherspoon. Yeah, you know, my half of my family were named Witherspoon, half of them were Witherspoon. People in Detroit didn't give a damn what your name was. We get Wither, Wither, like Wither, w you be Wither, you be Wither, you be Like W H E or W E A T H E R or W I T H E R. Oh, wow. oh, that's weird. Yeah, so I got some brother named Witherspoon. Same daddy. Oh, yeah, same, 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 same. <laughs> same dad. Only thing screwed up Just was down in the different. city hall. Oh, they that's put crazy. that, they, they didn't give a damn. And you're a Witherspoon. Witherspoon. All right. Sometimes I'm Witherspoon. Depends on uh, yeah. who you're who you asking. It's according, right? according to what lady I'm talking to. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know. That, that's Witherspoon. I'm Witherspoon. That was another dude. That was my twin. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, so I understand that you're doing a show. You're doing a, a weekend here at Helium Comedy Yeah, I'm at Helium. I got two more nights. 7.30 and 10 p.m. tonight. 7.30 and 10 p.m. 7.30 and 10 tonight and tomorrow. That's what's up. I'm back in L.A. Monday morning. And back to L.A. Sunday morning, I mean. Oh, Sunday morning. Sunday morning, yeah. Right on, right on. And uh -huh. LA's treating you well, obviously. Well, I, I do pretty good. Yeah, I'm, well, yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. I do pretty good. How much <laughs> I'm getting for this show? This is a, a passion piece, y'all. What a man with a check. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, he's, he's back around that corner. Uh, but hey. anyway, <laughs> please. everyone, please give it up for John Witherspoon, everybody. I ain't finished yet. What the hell y'all talking about? <laughs> Uh, when we come Thank back, you. it'll be Let's Talk and Things I Find Dope. So see you guys in a little bit. John Witherspoon, one more time, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, we'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Very nice to meet you again. All right. You're going to perform I'm sorry, tonight. I can't make this interview boring because this no, man is too exciting as a host. And I'm truly saying this, and if y'all can't do this, me and this man here, is going to leave and go somewhere else where we can get some love. I want everyone in the building to say, I love Pascal on the count of three. <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The Fur and Leather Center, providing the highest of fur and leather goods. IDEX Media does a lot. From IDEX Photography to IDEX Films. We help create forever memories and forever impressions. Image a nation. Image a world. IDEX Media.
So here at The Tent Guy, we try to do things completely differently than everyone else has done in the past. Our emphasis is on customer satisfaction from the moment they walk into the door to the moment they leave in their vehicle with whatever service it is that they had performed. We know that we're not the cheapest around, but we are the best. And that's the emphasis that we try to push onto everyone. We don't want to be the people that are advertising we have the cheapest prices in town because therefore we would never be the best. We offer full tinting services, custom tinting services on classic cars. We offer paint protection film, ceramic coatings, full detailing services. We offer full vehicle wrapping and graphics. We offer lettering on commercial vehicles. We offer full print vehicle wraps for advertising. We offer uh, exterior window advertising, window perf. Not only do we do automobiles, but we do residences, also commercial buildings. You're watching Pascal in the Morning. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Man, it's been a wonderful day. It's been a little bit uh, change of uh, plans and how we usually do our show. But, of course, you know, when you got somebody in the show and they got to go somewhere else, you kind of have to change things around and, and get that person in and out. But anyway, one time, one more time for John Witherspoon for being in the house, man. I am really appreciative of having him on the show. That was a big deal to me and I know to a lot of us in the room. But anyway, it is time for Things I Find Dope. I find dope, you know how we do. Seth Wyatt, let's go. All right, so I find there's, there's something that I find incredibly dope, and it's not like new news, but it's come back up again, and I'll just cut straight to it. Idris Elba, they're saying it's possible he could be the next 007. Like, that was, that was old news. People were throwing it around. There was a petition, all this stuff, and then a whole bunch of people got mad because um, he's black. But uh, the producers... <laughs> The producers are actually saying they, they're kind of hinting towards it. And he even, he even said in an interview, he said, yeah, those, uh, those rumors are wild. So <laughs> he, he didn't shut it down. A lot, of, uh, and it, a lot of people are starting to talk about it. People are uh, all abuzz on Twitter. And so it's, uh, it's looking like it's uh, promising that 007 could, uh, you know, be melon and popping really soon. I mean, a black James <laughs> Bond sounds pretty incredible to me. So yeah, I'm excited dope. about that. I mean, yeah. come on now. Yeah. Look what happened with Black Panther, though. Right. The numbers were astronomical. So, Black James Bond might yeah. be a big thing. Yeah. It could be a very big thing. So, Huge. think about it, guys. I'm, 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 ho I'm hoping for it. I, I know it doesn't make any sense. Like, how could he be the next James Bond when all the other James Bonds have been white and it's just been the same succession of stories and all that? But maybe James Bond could be an alias. You know, mm, his name could be Malik. Alias. His name could be Malik, and then all of a sudden, bang, you got James Bond the 15th or however many it's, James it's, Bonds there have been. It's Leroy. His name's Leroy. Yeah, his name but is he Leroy. goes by James Bond. You know what I'm saying? His name is Tyrone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And suddenly he's, uh, he's James Bond. You know, I'm just saying. It could be he an alias. Double o. Hey, Black so, Panther, though. Black Panther, though. Did you know, just, just recently, last few days, uh, they, they crossed, uh, they're, they're like number three domestically, like, like ever, like the most domestic box office ever. Yeah, well, well, you know, yeah. That's why I'm saying. Wow. <laughs> Look at the numbers, guys. Yeah. And if you had a good man, if you had like a good black director behind a black James Bond, I'm telling you that that'll outshine any James Bond movie. I'm, that's my prediction. It so was shine bright like a diamond. Let's make it happen. Let's it make it happen. Like a diamond. I mean, let it go. <laughs> let it yeah. be what it is, baby. Let's make it happen. Because I go. like Idris Elba, and I know, I know a lot of people like Idris Elba. So, and he's British, so he's already 90% there. 
You know what I mean? So done, you know? Just something to think about. British. Something to think about. He's British. 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 But anyway, that was, uh, oh, oh, also there is another mm. thing for mm. things I find dope. I forgot to say. Uh, the St. Louis uh, Police Department did a lip sync challenge with, uh, it was nice. The, uh, a celebrity came in and popped his head in. Cedric the Entertainer yeah. came in and Sick. gave a little, uh, did a little cameo on it. Here's a, a little piece of that video. Check it out. great time and just kick it and do something just you know just have fun and just kind of you know whatever but I also heard that during the taping of that uh, crime went up 50% so I don't know um, <laughs> I'm just kidding I'm kidding but oh. seriously a big shout out to the St. Louis Police Department it's nice to see you guys just kind of have fun and cut a rug some of you tried but some of you did cut a rug <laughs> so I appreciate you guys doing that that's some fun stuff so give it up for the STLPD that's some cool stuff, and that was things I find dope. And now it's time to get into let's talk. Test this out. Now you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh, he needs some milk. And in let's talk, I don't even know what to say right now. So Sean Hall, yo, what's up? <laughs> hey, what's up? What's up? So, uh, so our let's talk segment, we had a really, really good one. Uh, so NFL. They decided to incorporate male cheerleaders. So how do you feel about that? Do you think this is going to be a distraction? Mm. Uh, it's also having to deal with a huge step in gender equality on the field. And, uh, you know, it's just it's a real issue that's going on right now. So we have a few comments. Uh, we're just going to just go with these. So one comes from Rob. <clears throat> this is long. So Rob says, it's forcing this lifestyle on the world and other issues in this entire off season have any of these kneelers taken any of their free time to continue their message. Dang. Anyone. That message is, that message that was so important as to interrupt a national pastime. Where, they na where are they now? Okay. Um, are they using any of their mass salaries to raise money or organize events? This will be another thing to ruin football. Wow. Uh, well. To ruin football. Ruin okay, football. when it comes to that, that was a heavy one. That was heavy. Um, obviously, you voted Trump. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say this. Uh, the kneeling is a, it, it, it is a, obviously, it's a protest to make their voices heard for the injust social injustices and the injustices that have been going on in this country. Yes. They have every right to kneel if they want to. That's how I feel. Now, that has nothing to do with the male cheerleader part, but I'll say this. What else, what was that last part he said? What was the last sentence he said? The last part was, this will be another thing to ruin, ruin football. This is not another thing to ruin football, I don't think. Right. This is another thing to unify football. Because all walks of life watch, this, watch that sport. Black, white, Asian, gay, straight, whatever your race, creed, or if you like putting butter, peanut butter on your face at night, mm. everybody watches football. A lot of people watch football. So everyone, those people, the people that are a part of this, that, that organization, if they want to bring in men, male cheerleaders, sure. Why not? Like I said before, I'm interested to see what they do with it. If they're going to be dancing with the girls on, on, on the same level, or are they gonna be doing the aerials, doing all that kind of stuff? But I mean, that's, that's my own personal opinion. I don't think that they're trying to push any type of lifestyle, because I think he said something in regards to pushing a lifestyle. lifestyle. I don't, mm -hmm. think, that don't, think, don't so. think that at all. I don't think that at all. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. We are all a unified group of human race. We all live in this world. We all live in a, uni you know what I mean? We are all, we all have a lifestyle. Some of it's, some you agree and some you don't, but we all live under the same sky. Here's the thing: right. you don't know the lifestyle right of thing. any of the women that are that are yeah, no kidding. Around. You it's don't like know any of their lifestyle. These women, you know, quote unquote, are being objectified in in in, in a in a way as well. Why aren't they on the field then? Mm. You see what I'm saying? So, if they want to bring in men, if they want to bring in men, sure, why not? 
Why not? I, I don't see a big deal about it. I feel you like know? there are a lot of folks weighing in on this, too. Oh, yeah. a lot of people yeah. did. Uh, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, second, I didn't realize dancing was such a bad lifestyle. If someone dancing on the sidelines ruins your football experience, then you don't really like football. It's something else. You yeah. can use it as an excuse to watch dancing. She also said, interesting that you think a dude dancing is more of a stain on the sport than repeating sweeping domestic violence under the rug and persuasive head injury. Yeah, you can basically say she just dropped the mic and walked off the damn stage on that one. But, uh, yeah, Angie has a really good point. Has yeah. a really good point. But I'm going to throw it over to you guys. What do you guys think on this situation? Yeah, yeah. It is yeah. what it is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sean, yeah. what do you think? I'm cool with it as well because, I mean, when we were, like, in junior high and high school, yeah. I mean, we dealt with the same thing, male chili. So That was back then. Yeah, that was back then. And it's <laughs> like the things that are happening now in our world, it's all about diversity and equality, and I have no problem with it. Right? Yeah. yeah. How about you, Seth? I feel like, I mean, I, I, I value, um, he has a right to his opinion, right? He definitely has a right to his opinion. Um... It's not, it's, it's not ruining the sport. The sport is the sport. The cheerleading is, is separate. So if that's ruining it for you, then just like she said, you, were, you weren't watching for the sport. You were watching for the, for the dancers. Um, but as, as far as, yeah, there are, there are straight men that, that are, are in cheerleading as well. You know, I knew, I knew a guy in high school. I'm not saying there are a lot, but I'm can not going to assume. I just, can, I get this, can I just stop? Not going to assume. Can I ask, go ahead. Can I ask mm -hmm. just one question? I don't mean to interrupt your, yeah, yeah, your, go your ahead. piece. but. And I'm going to say this out to, oh, well, no, this sounds really general. Like Ooh, I'm generalizing say, I got to hear it now. I got to hear it now. I'm going to say it anyway. Yeah. But I don't think I've ever, oh, boy, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble for this. But I'm going to say it. I don't think I've ever met a straight male cheerleader. I'm just saying that. Okay. Okay. I mean that in all the niceness in the world. I don't mean to get, like, ran through here, y'all, on, on social media. But I don't think I've ever met a straight male cheerleader in my life, not never. Well, you know what? Okay, so so let me let me step back. As far as me meeting, so you say you have, all right? I haven't met a, a straight male cheerleader. I have met a uh, straight male uh, uh, like dudes that dudes that do ballet. Oh, that's, that's common. I'm just I'm just saying. So I mean, it's a, it's another type of dance. We're all assuming anyway. There's there's no we're we're pushing assumptions of someone's lifestyle based on what they do. Doesn't have anything to do with it, right? So, I mean, I don't think yeah. it has to have anything to do with it. So, I feel like people are making a big deal out of it. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Doesn't need but to be. But either you like it or you don't, and that's okay. You have the right to like it or not. Yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Whether or not, it's still going to happen. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens over this season. Maybe it lasts forever. Maybe it doesn't. You know? You never know. You never know. They're obviously going to try something, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, it'll be very see interesting to see. It'll be very interesting to see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see what? And, and, it is, and it is the L.A. Rams. Oh. <laughs> it is the L.A. Rams. They, you know. Is it St. Louis? Just Man. saying. Okay. So now we know what team you're on. <laughs> <laughs> so that being said, you know, uh, well, love to think. I'd love to hear what you think down below. Definitely keep the conversation rolling. You know, we. this is the opportunity, this is the platform for you guys to speak your mind. Obviously, we just had uh, somebody like Rob put in his two cents. Whether you agree with it or not, this is the platform to get your voice heard Say and so. keep the conversation talking. So, anyway, that was Let's Talk, everybody. Thank you guys so much for commenting down below. And when we come back, we'll be sitting down with the very funny, very talented comedian, Kenny Howell. See you guys in a minute. Deuces! I'm sorry, tonight. I can't make this interview boring because this no, man is too exciting as a host. And I'm truly saying this, and if y'all can't do this, me and this man here is going to leave and go somewhere else where we can get some love. I want everyone in the building to say, I love Pascal on the count of three. One, two, three. 
Wow. The Fur and Leather Center, providing the highest of fur and leather goods. IDEX Media does a lot. From IDEX Photography to IDEX Films. We help create forever memories and forever impressions. Image a nation, image a world. IDEX Media. So here at the Tent Guy, we try to do things completely differently than everyone else has done in the past. Our emphasis is on customer satisfaction from the moment they walk into the door to the moment they leave in their vehicle with whatever service it is that they had performed. We know that we're not the cheapest around, but we are the best. And that's the emphasis that we try to push onto everyone. We don't want to be the people that are advertising we have the cheapest prices in town because therefore we would never be the best. We offer full tinting services, custom tinting services on classic cars. We offer paint protection film, ceramic coatings, full detailing services. We offer full vehicle wrapping and graphics. We offer lettering on commercial vehicles. We offer full print vehicle wraps for advertising. We offer uh, exterior window advertising, window perf. Not only do we do automobiles, but we do residences, also commercial buildings. You're watching Pascal in the Morning. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If this is your first time checking out the show, please go to the Facebook.com forward slash The Pascal Show. Click that like button. If this is your first time checking out this on YouTube, because we're on YouTube right now too, yo. Go and please hit that subscribe button on the YouTube page. That's YouTube.com forward slash The Pascal Show. But anyway, I know you guys have been watching this show and having a great time. Before I even introduce my next and final guest of the day, please go out there. If you're watching this right now, share this feed. Go ahead and share it. Share, 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 share. I would love to see how far this goes out. Man, support St. Louis, y'all. This is a good show. We love what we do, and we get a lot of great talented people just like John Witherspoon on this show. Of course, the next guest included in that list as well. Man, you know him from, he's done stand up for <laughs> Def Comedy Jam, Comic View, Jamie Foxx's Laugh-A-Palooza. Please make some noise and welcome my guest, Kenny Howard. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up, man? How you doing, man? Good to meet you. Chilling, man. Chilling. Thank you, man. Please have a seat. All right, bro. Please, please have a seat. Man, so, man, how you been? I'm good, man. I'm good. You're good? Yeah, I was over there checking y'all's show out, man. I think it's decent. I like it. Oh, thanks. Decent, I'll take decent. Why decent, not? Decent, you know, that's a little slang word, man. No, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Oh, say that. <laughs> <laughs> that just means okay. Yeah, it can be better, though. No, that means dope. Dope. That means no, 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 I'm just playing. Questions, like the dope subject. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the Let's Talk segment. Yeah. Right. That oh, was, yeah, and by the way. That was dope, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I would love. They deserve a black James Bond. I, I think they deserve a black James Bond. I yeah. absolutely think so. They're going to change his name, though, to James Conn. <laughs> oh. We ain't going to go there now. Jermaine no, but he, Bond. But no, because you got to figure he going from Stringer Bell to the detective. That I mean, to the, to the to saving the world. That is true. So we want a black man to save the world. 
it'd be nice to see them yeah, see another that, that something's dope. black man save the and world. And the other subject was what? Right, right. You were doing like things a two-step over there. So yeah, I would love the to St. hear. Louis Let's police. talk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the St. Louis police. Right. That was the things that put dope on you. I mean, things. <laughs> Ooh, shots fired. We're going to get shot. We're going to get shots y'all fired. put off the air Yeah, <laughs> we're going to get kicked off. They seem to like get pulled over. No, you know they, what you did. You know what you did you today. You brought old boy on there. Dang, dang. No, but uh, no, but then I also, like, during the Let's Talk segment, I saw that, you know, you were kind of doing a two-step over there. Like, yeah, you were just like, yeah, oh, I, mm, I got to say something. So yeah. I would love to hear what you think about this whole uh, I mean, male cheerleaders thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't too much see that. You know, I mean, what they gonna dress in? They gonna dress like the women, or they gonna dress? I, I'm, I'm, that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, Maybe I know short. if I was playing football and I, I saw the dude out there, they'd have throw me offside. You think it would be a, a, a distraction? <laughs> like, are you running towards them or running away? I'm confused. I'm going back to the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I put him on some equipment, let him get hit a couple <laughs> times. He probably wouldn't mind getting hit though, would he? Uh, what are you going to play, uh, tight end? I mean, no. Oh. Oh. Am I going too hard Here we go. Home? No, no, man. I mean, you I'm know. just looking at it. I mean, we can handle you got it. a male. I don't know about them over there. We got a male cheerleader. Through the, through the, know, through the screen. Rah, rah. I mean, we've seen male cheerleaders. They flip the hell on sweatpants, but is they going to put on the whole pump thing? And, you look like you you used no, to this. I'm showing them. Like you know, you got some I'm nice stretching. But it's funny, you got some I'm nice calf stretching. muscles, man. Like you know, because I you, played you, football. There you go. Yeah, I played division. I played college football for Illinois State. You, you had the moves, like. And we didn't. Yeah, I was, I was trying just, to get, get away from somebody, you know. <laughs> Pop them down. Rah so. rah. I mean, I don't know how it does it. No, I don't Dad, know. we know I ain't. But you the one didn't play ball with that. <laughs> That's all right. We like tight jackets, man. They look good. Uh, uh, right. We, you know, it shows off the thing, you know. Right. Is, it, is that a long short sleeve or a short long sleeve? It's, a, it's both it's at both. the same damn it's time. Same rack. It's the same damn time. See, I was just looking at the male chili. The thing is, you know, they're just turning everything to transgender. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I looked at it. But they got transgenders running track, and you got people That protesting. is true, too. Yeah. And people are having a huge so problem with that, too. they take a few females out of their jobs. That's true. And then it, how many of them we going to put on one team? So then is, do you think that they should, do you Leave think that alone, the transgender man. community Football should be considered is a, that? Football is a contact sport, man. You know? Right. So you don't want no man out there representing your team. Soft. You see what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. I just don't know where to go with this conversation. And that's it's a, it's a very hairy conversation. Take it right back to the trash <laughs> where, where they start. I just don't see it making no making a big issue out of it. Let them do some flips on the sidewalk and, and let the girls go cheer. Oh, okay. So you, you know because the girls, I mean, they made a cheerleader movie about the Dallas uh, cheerleader girls, remember? And all the men liked it. You don't remember that? No. I'm a little too old for you. So look. They did make a movie about the Dallas cheerleaders. Oh, you mean like the audition the, process and no, everything? No, they made a movie about the cow, uh, the cowgirls. It oh, really? Big. Yeah, yeah. So you want to make one about the cowboys and them? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I it see what you're saying. It just don't work. I see what you're saying. You know, Maybe, I, I know it's, it's polite. I mean, there's a lot of guys that cheer, but right. they in the stands. Go yeah. cowboys. I don't want to see no man out there. No, no. Okay. So you're not I just don't that. think that's cool at all okay it's not i mean not, but you know you, that's not a man's I, I job think, and i think you are voicing and i think you are voicing what a lot of other men think too as right. well i mean, you know I mean, I mean, mean, I mean you're not alone want to be a in this conversation cheerleader <laughs> well you know what like as a kid i'm going pro there, at this there, <laughs> I mean, there, there are there's a kid right now but what, i'm just saying there, go pro as a cheerleader really hey there's hey, there's Men who want to do ballet for, for a living. There's men who want right, to. Right, but they stay in the arena. You know I, see, I see what you're saying. I, I'm, I don't I'm just think it should be a big issue. I'm very interested to see what happens with it, where they take it. Right, the whole unless night. they come out with a new football team called the Gacy's or something, then I, then I can see them having some male cheerleaders. Yeah. 
People looking at me like, man, this dude is too much. No, 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 no. I'm not, I, saying, I'm I'm not thinking that at all. You, I'm you, from that's Chicago, your... man. I come from the streets of Chicago. Here it so is. I this... don't too much pull no punches. No, I understand. And it's your opinion. That's your opinion. You're yeah. entitled to it. They're there it is. You know what I mean? It, you know? That's why the Let's Talk segment is, is around. So I just that we don't can think all talk it should it. be a big news issue. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just, they should have just snuck them out there and then see what somebody said. Right. You know? Throw them out there. Uh, and not make a huge announcement about it. Just do it. Because, I mean, what is this outfit going to be? Right. Because if he going to dress like the girls, then, then they, I guarantee you, if you didn't tell nobody and you put a man out there in a skirt and some pom-poms, you're going to hit something different than what you're in now. Right. That's just my point on it. Okay. Now, if he come out in some warm-ups and sweats, you know, cool. And I think that's what's going to be. I think it's going to be something like yeah. that. You know, pants and, like, the, 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 the... Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, Kyle's male cheerleader is going to be, I think it's going to be pretty conservative. Conservative. I don't think it's going to go right. to that level of uh, cool. skirts I mean, and pom-poms like that. You when know they what call I mean? them a cheerleader. There are male cheerleaders, though, right? So and they're called cheerleaders, right? Yeah, yeah. so to be cheerleaders. So, so they're professionals now. Yeah, I guess so. Right. I mean, you know, we'll see what happens with it. Hey. We'll see what they do with it. Hopefully it's just tastefully done and it'll be all right. Imagine being in the bar and meeting. What you do for a living? I'm a talk show host, man. I'm a cheerleader. It's like, <laughs> all right, man. Mm. You do that respect thing. Respect them after that. Just respect. You go respect Mad them respect. after that. Respect. My respect. <laughs> no, he f flips around. So, uh, let, 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 moving right, let's on. Go to We're gonna move on. Uh, uh, yeah, so I understand. I understand that you're doing the uh, the laugh lounge right yeah, now. Yeah, we're doing the uh, laugh lounge this weekend. It's uh, they, they got a year anniversary. They just been there a whole year to. Uh, First, was well, second Urban Black Comedy Club in St. Louis. And they're doing it pretty big. They, they've been pretty they be successful. They've yeah. definitely been killing So I give them a lot of love. Andy, Jesse, you know, they came out. Yeah. And, they, and then it's in the county right. where people can come from all around versus trying to go downtown and right. deal with a lot of other issues. So, yeah. And they've been pretty successful. I want to give them applause Hell for yeah. Black Owl. Yeah. Comedy Club. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, yeah. and I understand, like, so, you know, you've been... You're from Chicago, so yeah. is this your first time here at the Laugh Lounge, or you've done this no, uh, a couple done it times? No, I've done a couple times. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I've and done it around Christmas. So you and, you and Jesse go way back. You've known yeah, him for a long Jesse's time. Yeah, me and Jesse been buddies for like 20 years. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just yeah. because of the stand-up circuit, you know, right. the comedy yeah. circuit. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, I've been doing comedy 26 years. Yes, you've been doing it for uh, because I understand Def Comedy Jam. First comedy Def Jam when Martin Lawrence was the. Yeah, I know when he was starting to blow up, right? Did it five times. Yeah. What was that like, man? It was cool, man. He was a little arrogant back then, but he was cool. Really? Yeah. Yeah? It, it turned out pretty cool, though. I ended up signing with him and going on tour. Oh, Jam okay, okay. For like about a year. So at first it was like, mm, what's up with you, man? And then it's like, well, you're bringing me on, so we cool now. Yeah, no, no. I mean, he was kind of, you know, and he was real little. He yeah. He jumped rope under the table, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. He, he, was, is. he was little, but he had a real big, like, attitude. But he was, he, he was cool with me. I had worked with him before. Actually, I did a show with him, John Weatherspoon, Laura Hayes, and Adele Gibbons, maybe six months before I filmed. So I already knew him. So when you first did your first Def Comedy Jam yeah. stand-up, what was that like? I mean, aside from Martin Lawrence, but I mean, like, the actual experience of going out there and doing your stand-up. It was pretty cool, man. It was like, it was kind of different because, you know, you're used to doing stand-up, but it's like, like when, you, when you're there, you go to rehearsal, then before the show, you know, we was like standing in it. You, you can't see the stage. Yeah. Because we'd be down on the stairs. It was so small. So we'd be down there doing the prayer, like me and Chris Tucker and a couple of us were doing the prayer. Then Martin would call your name, you come up the stairs, and you come out. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then, the, like, the thing with Bernie, Bernie was like my big brother. So it was a guy got booed before Bernie. And he was like, I ain't scared of them. And he came out and was like, I ain't scared of you. And that's why he created that. Wow. So it was like off that audience. Oh, wow. But once they okay. on your side, they love you. They fall all over the floor and stuff. Well, when you say, when is the, like, the, 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 the turning point? Or when, when, you know, you're up there on stage, you're about to, you know, you're doing your jokes. When do you know for a fact that you got them? That you got the audience? Mm -hmm. uh, it's like you can see them all, like, get like this. You know what I'm saying? Then the first, you, you're reaching it first, unless they know you. Right. And then sometimes, that's why I tell comics, if, if you don't catch them, Find that one guy that's looking at you, and he'll give you the energy. But with Def Jam, you got to come out blasting. Right. You got to come right out with confidence. Hey, dude, look, they fight. You know? Oh, yeah. And then they be like, yeah. Because they'll you swallow you whole. Oh. Or they eat your life. Yeah. And you ain't got but five to seven minutes. Right. You know, they cut it down to five, but you film seven minutes. So have you ever seen anybody totally just tank? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like on, on that show. 
when they film, they film like five comics for each show. Right. But they only show three to four. Three to four. Because somebody always get cut. <sighs> always. Because wow. it's, it's, it's different. Like, if you're on the side of the stage, you can see the audience. You can try to get a feel for what you're going to do. Yeah. But them Jim, you downstairs. Right. So when they call your name, you're on the stairs, and they say, all right, next in line. Then you hear your name, you run up the stairs like you're coming out the locker room. Right. So you don't know what to expect. Wow. You know. Wow. Have you ever gone up on a, on stage of any kind where you went out there and you changed your set altogether? Yeah, I like got, I got audible. One you're time. like, nope, not doing that today. We're I going got this way. One time in front of ten thousand. <laughs> It was like in Chicago, and they had like the uh, a rap fest. It was Cypher's Hill, Ice Cube, Naughty by Nature, Scarface. And I was the only comic on the show. Yeah. So they like threw me in at the middle. So one of the dudes that was hosting said, "Are y'all ready for Naughty by Nature?" The crowd was like, "Yeah." Oh, no. It's like, all right, but first. <laughs> this dude. But, oh <laughs> man, that is terrible, man. Yeah, so I walked out there, and my yeah. whole city just they was like, boo. boo, boo. Yeah, yeah, because it's like we want to talk about nature. I was like, oh, y'all just do the mic. <laughs> then I had to go around the neighborhood the next day. I'm in the hood, man. You got boo. You fucked yeah. up. Yeah. What happened, man? Yeah, you're yeah. Like, ah. You didn't rip us, right? Your MC was wrong, man. Did you deck yeah. the MC in the face? He died recently. I mean, later. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it was a learning experience, you know what I'm saying? Because I heard it was. you have to prepare yourself for everything. And I go on stage, I treat every show like it's my last. Right. So I give it all the energy I got because you never know. Yeah. You know, so I go out and I go hard as I can. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope, man. That's why I'm raspy like that. <laughs> <laughs> you go hard. Hard in the paint, right? Yeah, you got to, you know. Yeah, I man. mean, that's how I feel. You treat every show like your last, you won't have a bad one. Right. And if you do have a bad one, you should look at it as a, a yearning to get back to redeem yourself. Right. So, so what do you think about a... Uh, there's not a whole lot of stand-up comedy shows, like TV shows right, anymore. Yeah. What do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts on this what new, this new know, internet stuff? This new internet stuff. I mean, and I, are I, you a part of it? No, I'm old-fashioned. I'm, I'm not that good with the internet. I, I just go on and post my shows, just like Facebook. When I first got on that, I didn't understand because somebody gonna send me a like. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, how the hell are you gonna like me, man? What kind of, you know? I'm like, I called him a name, man. You can't be. Like, I mean, that's some gay stuff. Right. And somebody told me that was something good, so I had to hit him back and say, yeah, thanks for the like. Right. <laughs> you know, but yeah. I, I get it. You know, you got to do it because that's what's out now. But the only difference with the Internet comics is when you go on stage, you got one shot mm. to make that joke funny. On the Internet, they can holler cut and then do it again and again right, and again. Right. So when you see it, it's funny, right? And then, you know, I give them their love for that. They're making their money. But when they come on stage... And they see that crowd, they get that clay face. And they, a lot of them don't do good, and, you know, With the at stand first. Up. Yeah. yeah. But they make good money, though. Oh, they Because everybody want to come see them. Yeah. But they don't want to come see them again. Right. You know, I see, I've been at some shows. Some True, energy, though. I ain't going to say their names, but I saw people running out of there. You know what I'm saying? And, and then they headlining. So a headliner, you do 45 to 50 minutes at least. And they was doing 20 and getting off the stage. Damn. Yeah. And then they was going up in front of some big comics. Like, I had a show with Country Wayne uh, in Baltimore. Me, Talent, uh, Coco Brown, mm -hmm. you know, and it was, a, it was a couple of us, you know, guys who'd been in the game for a while. And he was getting the most money, but he didn't want to go last. So as comics, we was like, we're going to put that heat on him. Right, right. You know, you, you go up there and, you know, bow, bang him out. Right. Because, you, you know, it's like initiation. Of course. Because the way we grew up with comics, you be in L.A., It'd be 20 comics that's funny. Right. And you never know when you're going up. So you always just ride that wave. You don't look at them as competition. You look at them as passing the baton. Right. But a lot of them young cats be like, man, I don't want to. Let me go in front. You know, right. rise to the occasion. Right. And that's what makes you survive at this. Yeah, that's I true. I do a great hound bad for That's very true. That's true. No, because I, you know, I was just at a couple, uh, was at, a, uh, at Helium uh, a few weeks ago. Headliner for somebody, I'm not gonna say anything, but right. the people who were opening for Features for it and, and, and opening were action. annihilating Destroyed. the yeah. the headliner, yeah. like annihilated them. And he, you know, person came out, did his thing, right. all that, but it was just wasn't as just wasn't as good. As the build up. And, oh man, the buildup was, was like like a right. nice climb. 
Yeah. By the time it was right before the headliner, everyone's like on the floor laughing, crying. Yeah. And then it was just like and the see, energy that kills just his brand. Yeah. Because people along the internet can kill you too. Yeah. Because people go back out and say, "I went to see such and such. Uh, he was horrible." Yeah. And, the, and the, the other thing about like live comedy, you know, right. it's just like going and seeing live theater kind of thing. What, you know, one day could be different from the next. Right, yeah. You could be on one day and completely cold the next day, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I've always put that in consideration, but it's true. still it's like, hmm, Plus you, it's something about it. On the stage, it. you get the improv. Right. You know, like John Weathers, but like me, I don't write jokes. I just write a subject. Right. I might just write my parents, right? And then I'll come up with three things on my mother, three things on my father, or three things on such and such. And then I'll go on stage and work them. I'll do each, each thing on each one until, until I find which one is the funniest. So the first one might be the funniest. The next time I do it, I put that one last. That way the crowd go, ah, 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 ah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So by the time the bit is groomed, it's boom, boom, boom. Right. You know, and then a lot of these older cats, they'll go take from the younger guys with jokes. Like I know I was in the room with Steve Harvey, D.L. and them about 15 years ago when they was doing the game. And they was talking about the younger comics bombing, but some of them had some good material. So right. they would, you know, they're on the road all the time, so they would take some of their jokes. And they was laughing about it. I was like, come on, man, you can't do nobody else. They was like, look, man, what is the odds of this dude making it? So why shouldn't the joke make it? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, That's real talk. And, stuff, then they would, and they could do the joke, and you hear it from them. So when the youngster do it, it's his joke. People say, man, you stole that from such and such. Yeah, and it's like, but no, it no, no, that was his me. joke. Yeah. That's mine. It's a cold man, game. Man, that's terrible, man. It's a cold game. That is cold, man. Yeah. And why don't just bring them in as a writer and just call it a day? A lot of them turn into writers. Yeah, I was going to say. A lot of them, they go get, because a lot of guys can write funny stuff, but then it's performing it is a whole other thing. A whole other thing, yeah. Yeah, you, you got to just, you got to be able to improv. Yeah. You know, so I love that. That's dope. I used to sit up and roast everybody. That was my thing. Of course. So, yeah. So I used to turn my, my 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 snaps into jokes. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I saw a chick had a little bit of ponytail. I said, you just gonna squeeze your ponytail, you know? So, <laughs> but take two people to do this. You put your foot and pull. <laughs> and then I had another woman who had, the, you know, the, the ponytail with two different textures, you know, with the taco meat here and the stick oh, here. Yeah, so yeah. I just started adding them to them. Just like I, I was in the barbershop and the dude had a hairline that was eating with his ears. So. I, I, I told him the barber had to line him from behind. He just <laughs> never went in front, pulled the whole chair back, and yang yang. Never, <laughs> never walked in front of the dude. And I took that to another one where dude had a double ball spot, you know, where his hair stopped, started, and then oh, said, yeah. forget it right there. <laughs> so I put them two together with the hair jokes. And I and that was three. Right, and I saw and a guy in the post office with dreads and a ball spot, and I was like, you can't do that. Yeah, you, can't, you, can't. Yeah, you need all your hair. It, that doesn't make dreads. any sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, he gonna try to hide the boss, but he gonna pull all the braids up to the top and put a rubber band. <laughs> right. So it looked like a tree, right, on a beach. Oh, it looked like yeah. the beginning of Gilligan's Island. <laughs> was, yes, I put Looking like a together. black pineapple or something. <laughs> it's like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> see, and that's what you do. You just keep going on it, right. what you see, until you see something funny. Right. Then you do it. Yeah. You know, and then when it works with every crowd, you keep it. Because everybody don't laugh at the same thing. Yeah, yeah, you that's know? true. So that's, that's true. That's dope, man. Well, shoot, man, I appreciate you being here. Uh, Laugh Lounge Laugh tonight. Lounge, we got two tonight. Uh, what eight, times? Eight fifteen and ten ten thirty. Okay. Uh, two tomorrow, one Sunday. Uh, also, uh, where are you going after that? Uh, I got to go to Omaha, Cleveland, Kansas City. I took with Mike Epps. Actually, I got a uh, hour special that Mike Epps produces on YouTube. It's called Mike Epps presents Kenny Howe oh, from okay. the projects to the ghetto. Cause I moved from the project yeah, to the yeah. hood, so same thing. <laughs> and we got like about 400,000 views on that. We're trying to set up the Netflix. Okay. Uh, also, I'm on Netflix with uh, Mike Epps uh, from Live from Club Nikki and Me, MG Thang, which is also from, from here. Okay. And uh, I got a movie uh, I'm shooting called Back Together Again. Back Together Again. Yeah, the director's Lawrence Hill Jacob, the father from, from the Jacksons. And uh, he also was in Cooley High. And I did a play with Judge Matthews, too. Uh, called Tell It to the Judge. I was his bailiff. It was me, him, and Ralph Trasvet. What? Yeah, I was the bailiff. Was, was this the, was this recent? About four years and four, five years ago. Oh wow. Yeah, we did about we did about six months together. Uh, I was uh, selling weed in the courtroom and then because <laughs> yeah, they let me just freestyle. So That's what's up. Just like John said, if it was funny, 
You'll keep it the Just next keep it show. going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You keep so, building on top of that. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Well, that's hey. How I met my wife from St. Louis. Give my wife a shout oh, out. Oh, okay. What's my up? Wife, four kids. SCL. My wife, Angie. Native. So, yeah. Yeah, man. I met her about 21 years ago. And oh, congratulations. Been together ever since. That's great. Yeah, I moved down here. I had to give up stuff moving here. English is one of the things I had to give up. <laughs> Y'all, y'all with them R's, look yeah, yeah, R's, this. going over an R and sitting that char. Oh yeah, you know, shit has fell down them stars and <laughs> the worst. I was hard off, man. And the hard dude off. asked me, "Do I drink bar?" I'm like, "Bar? What is that?" It's a bar. Yeah, yeah. he said, "But well, I say beer." It's beer. It's called beer. Yeah, it's it's not bar. bar. <laughs> and it's not her. You no, know what I mean? I'm yeah. not. I'm not a her. Right. No, it's not her. It's, it's here. It's, it's see, here. Or it could be her. Yeah, oh. or her. Yeah, it's like hair. What are you talking there about, you man? Yeah. You it's know. Thing, man. Oh man, but anyway, definitely check him out. We can make some noise for Kenny Howe, everybody. Thank you for being here, brother. I appreciate you having me, man. Hey, man. Facebook keeps supporting this brother. I really like him. Great personality. Thank you. Great crew. Thank you. I didn't even know y'all was in here, man. This is awesome. Y'all Thank you, man. Yeah, I drove past it. Looking for it. Oh, yeah, you drove right by and you're like, yeah. pulled up. You're like, oh, this is what? I'm oh, like, nice. is the youth center? They, they hooping and stuff. Oh, wow. Business. Yeah, this is some great stuff, this man. This is awesome, man. Real yeah, professional. Man. I Thank hope you, they move you to a real network. Thank you, brother. TV constantly. Yeah. Your brother, man. Your I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Thank I like you. the way you interview. You lead me right into doing what I want to do. Exactly. That's, that's awesome. how it is, man. That's, know, that's, that's, that's sweet, man. part of the game. Good job, baby. Hey, thank you, brother. Once again, for Kenny Howe, everybody. Uh, if you see him, be sure to check him out at the Lap Lounge this Lap weekend. Lounge. He's hilarious, as you already know, so go check him out. 270 and West Florence. 270 West Florence. It will be right back. See you guys in a little bit. Deuces. Nobody clapping. Welcome back. Hey, what? <laughs> yeah, 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 let's do it. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, hey, uh, well, yeah, you just saw all that feed, all that live stuff. We apologize. It is what it is. Uh, we, For some odd reason, there was a little bit of a glitch that was going on. But anyway, I just wanted to say real quick, and you can whip the camera around. Just a big thank you to DJ Kimmy New. You can flip the camera around. Flip the camera around. DJ Kimmy New, thank you so much. Check her stuff out. Be sure to go check her out on uh, this this weekend. She's be DJing this weekend over at the uh, where again? House of Soul. House of Soul. For STL Culture. Anyway, uh, you can whip back over here to me. Well, this is gonna be live as hell. Anyway, I want to say thank you so much to everybody who came in. One more time for John Witherspoon, y'all. Man, that was an amazing one. That was amazing. And one more time for Kenny Howe. He was just high. He wasn't nothing. He wasn't nothing. I got to go, y'all. I'm going to let y'all go. I'm going to leave with this. Black people, we love y'all. Black people always going to dance. You know, when black people get old, they be dancing. Then they had all them surgeries. You get the pain. <laughs> but black people, they break off about eight dances. My father, he break off about eight dances. But you won't know one of them. But he had his brother call him out. And he looked just like what he doing. He's like, call him for him out. They ready? Call him out. They wind it up. Ooh, reach for the sky. Climb the pole. Play the violin. Hypnotize her. Clean the windshield. Fly the helicopter. Get up on her. Back up off of her. Drive the car. Shoot the arrow. Kill the rope. Shoot the dice. Check out and I celebrate. I'm Kitty House. See y'all tonight. Yeah. And, uh... That's, a, that's what I would 
call when Percocet really kicks in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling good. Sit me back. Get off yourself. Okay, anyway, uh, I want to say thank you one more time for Kenny Howell. Everybody make some noise for him. That was fun. Today was a fun but sweaty one. Uh, we will see you guys Monday. We got a great lineup coming for you next week. It's going to be insane, so be sure to tune in. And like I said before, if you've not seen this show before and you have not done this yet, go like that page. Please share this feed, all right? We had greatness on today, all right? Lots of comedic talent in the house today. But anyway, it's time to get going. And like I always say, it's never too late to sit down and get to know someone. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys on a blessed Monday. Much love to you guys. Have a safe weekend. Peace. Peace. Yeah.